AK, Dynamite and Address, or just Andrea K. Whatever you call her, don't call her fake news. It's the Andrea K Show on The Answer San Diego. Welcome back to tonight's Andrea K Show. There's just so many better names that I've been called. <laughs> and I'm sure that if there's any uh, Republican establishment that we're listening at the open, I'm sure that they might have been calling me a few names. Don't you think so, Calm Skins? down, Bulldog. Oh, yeah, that's one of my faves. I'm um, glad to have you guys with me. 888-344-1170. I know that we had some calls earlier. Um, uh, write that number down and give us a call in the last segment of the show. We'll be able to open up the phones. Uh, joining me now, though, uh, to talk about uh, kind of something we've been talking about uh, from since the open of the show, which is the failed GOP leadership. And one area in which they've completely failed is to protect us against the censorship and the complete uh, persecution of speech and thought and the, just the, the wholesale destruction of our First Amendment rights across the country. Uh, so my guest now is Mark Rudolph. He is a branding advisor to CEOs. He's author of Intra Branding, the Keystone of Corporate Agility. You can find out more about him at markrudolph.com, and he joins me now. Hello, Mark. Welcome to the Andrea K. Show. Good to talk to you, Andrea. Well, I don't know if you heard breaking news before the show. Um, a couple things broke. Uh, the Republican Party decided to prop up Liz Cheney, uh, leaving her in a leadership position, although her attempt to uh, her traitorous attempt to try to take down a president um, was so failed. I mean, you know, I, I jokingly said she couldn't lead a frat boy to a to a beer at, at Mardi Gras. I mean, it was abysmal. She's nobody should be in a leadership position. Then we hear another breaking news story is that um, the um, John Matz, who was the CEO of Parler, has been ousted by the board. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you want to weigh in on those before we talk about uh, Governor DeSantis in Florida and what I think is a brilliant move against big tech. Well, the uh, first of all, the answer to every question you ask is money. So no matter what any politician does, it's always money. And Liz Cheney has money behind her. And uh, the question is, did she really fail to bring down Trump? And I I don't know if she failed. The fact is, is that the Republican Party is impotent and irrelevant. It has absolutely no power. The people in it are worthless. Mm. And what the, the results of that are that we now have panoramic Marxism in this country. And that means if you rotate your body in 360 degrees, no matter where you look, you'll see it. In the schools, with the 1619 Project, the BLM propaganda, the anti-American propaganda, every graduate is now an AOC clone. In corporations, they're making their employees read white fragility. They've given a lot of money to BLM. Larry Fink, who's the CEO of BlackRock, which manages $9 trillion, the largest money manager in the world, has an edict now to CEOs around the world. If you don't accept our climate change agenda, no loans for you. Mark Benioff, whom I actually have met before, Uh, who's worth $8 billion, is the founder and CEO of Mm Salesforce.com, announced at Davos, uh, the World Economic Forum, capitalism is dead. Uh, The World Economic Forum is really the leader of all corporations. And what they're saying is in the future, nobody gets to own anything Mm -hmm. except the elitists. Mm -hmm. And that build back better that Biden uh, would spout off every time he was opening his mouth. That comes from the World Economic Forum. Right. And so he didn't make that up. And then no, that's Coca-Cola, the great reset we've talked about here on the show. Right. And Coca-Cola has also said to all of its law firms and any any company doing business with it, if you're not down with our culture of diversity, you're out. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Before you government? move on from that, Critical that's race theory. Right. Well, hang on real quick, Mark, because I want to touch on that because that's a huge story that, that uh, broke today that has to do with Coca-Cola. And I'm glad you brought that up, because what they're saying is you've got to you've got to have um, if you're a law firm representing us then you've got to have 30 percent of this color. You've got to have 20 percent right. of this. And they've got an affirmative and action you have to plan report to us quarterly. Yes, you have to report quarterly. And if you don't meet our requirements, then we're going to cut your legal fees or we're going to can't or we're going to you know stop doing business with you um so talk about systemic talk about systemic discrimination in our in our country right 
but I just want to keep moving around our panorama here. Okay. The, the, in uh, big in the, the government, they're teaching critical race theory again now that Trump is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, men and women are interchangeable, and of course, climate change. The, 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 the Democrats only care about three things: climate change, melanin, and gonads. Mm -hmm. uh, moving down to the big tech purge, this takes us back 88 years to Nazi Germany. This is how the Third Reich started. But the Third Reich never would have been possible without IBM. A lot of people don't know this. People who are my age remember the IBM card, the punch card. Well, IBM, that used to be called the Hollerith card. And uh, Adolf Hitler needed a way to identify, locate, and categorize all of its citizens so that they could go in, root out the Jews, and execute them. Mm -hmm. That was not possible without IBM. And the CEO of IBM was Thomas J. Watson. You hear commercials on TV now for IBM's Watson? That's the guy. He worked side by side with Hitler, made a fortune for IBM off of Hitler, and Hitler could not have killed all of those Jews without IBM. Today, the big tech is the same. Now, they're not sending people to concentration camps, literally, but they're sending them to virtual concentration camps. So people are losing their jobs the same way the Jews were losing their jobs in Nazi Germany. So it's very similar and it's very eerie. So the big tech, the, with the purge was, would not be possible without Twitter, Facebook, Google, YouTube, and even Amazon, because Amazon knows what we read. They know where we live. So it's very scary. And then, of course, you have the mainstream media right. pushing the Marxist agenda and suppressing the news. The point is that the Republican Party could have stopped this, mm -hmm. did not, and now it's out in the world. So no matter where you go, Marxism is now the rule. Right. And the people in D.C. are powerless to stop it. So what DeSantis is doing in Florida is interesting, and he's standing up. This is what you have to do. You actually right. have to do something. Right. And I want to go into I, and I want to get into a couple of the details for the listeners as to what he's doing, um, because it's important that we get into the details, because I want to make sure that that people understand that this is not just something that is I'm going to go after big tech. He's actually got some interesting um, items here, one of which is uh, that there's going to be fines of one hundred thousand dollars per day levied on tech companies that suspend candidates for elected office in Florida from their platforms. Uh, there will be daily fines for any tech company that uses their content and user-related algorithms to suppress or prioritize the accent, uh, access of any content related to political candidate or cause on the ballot. My favorite is that they're, they're going to, he's empowered the Florida Attorney General to bring cases against the tech company that violate conditions under the state's Unfair and Deceptive Practices Act. And this is something I've talked about on my show before, that one of the ways I didn't understand why there wasn't lawsuits in the past going against them for fraud and the inducement, because these are organizations that have taken money from people, even individuals, you've got, you can set up your business page, you can launch your, your political action committee or your political show and do Facebook Lives and they've taken money from people to launch their their political organization. Same thing with Twitter. And then to take the money from them and then deplatform them and shut them down, which to me is to not provide the services for which they've been paid. And nobody's bothered to sue them on that behalf. You've put the hurt on them financially and that's going to stop some of this stuff. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. But the point is, the, the, the point behind this, Andrea, is that DeSantis is doing something. Right. Republicans never do anything. They're good at bloviating and pontificating and, and terrible at fighting. They always take a butter knife to a cannon fight. They love to go on Twitter and say, why don't the Democrats understand that if they raise the minimum wage to $15 that they're going to cause unemployment? That's all they do. And you know who's the worst? Ronna McDaniel, the head of the RNC. And Trump nominated her for another term terrible mistake they, yeah. they're just they're just spineless and they're disgusting yeah. and the, the democrats keep fighting and fighting and fighting and then biden up there with his unity he doesn't want unity he wants punity of, he absolutely want, he wants punity absolutely. and the thing is is that whenever you hear the word bipartisan that's here's what it means republicans become democrats 
Well, we That's actually, I think, I think it's really clear that that it's um, that this this is not the 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 issue with the. I started asking what's really going on with the Republican Party back during the Bush administration because it just I I was I was trying to figure out how much of this is about Republican weakness, and I'm tired of hearing Republicans being called weak. They're not weak. What they are is in on the game. There's a game being played, and they're in on it, and it's called the Unicrat Party. We've got a one party system. They crafted the rules to make it difficult for a third party to get launched because they're incredibly entrenched. You've got the Ronna McDaniels collecting $200 million supposedly to fight election fraud, didn't spend but four, billion, four million of it to a law firm in Pennsylvania who didn't do anything, and then skipped off on vacation during the during the Georgia recount election. Well, so my point if is, if is they're that- in on it, they're, If they're in on it, how are they not weak? That's because me, because that's, that's not weak if if they're, that's not weak but they're getting what they want they're as much the party of Marxism as the Democrats they are loving being in this position right now which is the phony uh, we're in the minority they're back in their sweet spot where they get to pretend that they're the opposition party when they're not Paul Ryan was just as much he actually used some of the same language on the campaign trail as Hillary Clinton he said I see myself as a re- representative of people in India as much as the United States of America. There is no daylight, in other words, between the Republican Party and the Democrats. That's not about weakness. In fact, they're really strong when they're able to convince people that they are actually are a party of limited government and low taxation and regulation. They, they don't have a problem in, in uh, coming for you and going after Marjorie Taylor Greene and calling her a cancer. And uh, look at look at how they cooperated with the Democrats and, and the FBI and the DOJ going after President Trump. That's not weakness. That's strategy. Final thoughts before we have to let you go. Sorry, if, if you don't stand, if you don't have, if you can't take a stand, you don't have a brand. And the Republicans don't take a stand, except for a guy like Josh Hawley. And what I'm I saying is, thought, well, you know, I, I think what it is, is their brand, they have a brand. They just don't believe, they, they're just lying about who they really are. They're lying about their brand. Always, if you're lying about who you are, then you don't have a brand. Well, we can, we can quibble, o- we, I get that. We can quibble over uh, that. Well, but I'm my point guy. is, is they're phony. A brand, uh, Andrea, a brand is the emotional connection you have with your customers, or in this case, with your voters. You know, you know, we I had a guest on my show recently who accurately described where we're at worldwide, which is the, the voters are we're at a place of dealignment. People don't people care about policy and they care about how the policy affects their lives. They're not really interested in brands and in, in terms of labels politically at this point. That's why Trump was able to tear down the blue wall and he was able to attract Democrat voters because the labels aren't really what matters to the American people. It's your actions. You were the right labels. when you were talking about the actions actions that they're not taking actions that back up what they say they're, that they're about on the campaign trail. Don't don't and, don't mis, don't misunderstand that a brand is not a label. A brand is the emotional connection. And what was Trump's brand? A guy who fights for us and a guy who gets it done. That was his brand. That's why people loved him. That's why they lined up in the streets. Right. Because they said this guy is fighting for us and not only does he fight for us, he wins for us. That was his brand. That's not a label. That's an emotional connection. And that's why Biden, when he went out to campaign, he couldn't get 10 people. Gotcha. Because he doesn't have a brand. He has nothing. He was installed like software. And that's the difference. And so any Republican who sides with the Democrats and goes after the money and doesn't take a stand like Josh Hawley is weak. Well, we can so we can agree to disagree. I got to leave it there. We're past the point of a break. So um, you guys can learn more about Mark. Go to uh, markrudolph.com. And that's M-A-R-C for Mark. And it's R-U-D-O-V as in Victor.com. Thanks for being here, Mark. We're going to take a break. We come back. We've got Michael.